Hi, this is Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast, episode number one, brought to you by Sound Solutions Acoustical Consulting at ssacoustical.com, an independent acoustical consulting firm. I provide you with knowledge, resources to address, and resources to address acoustical issues. That's the goal of this podcast. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I'm really excited to get this podcast and video series started. Our goal is to explain some of the projects, some of the issues we come across, provide resources, inexpensive tools, guidelines. The target audience is architects and engineers that deal with acoustical issues. Uh, It could also be other people that have acoustical uh, concerns and would like some solutions. So in this episode, I'd really just like to broadly describe my background, what we do, uh, and what this podcast will encompass. Uh, Again, my goal is to review some of the projects we come across, but also to answer any questions. If you have any, contact us. I'll give you contact information, and uh, I'd be glad to address them. So we deal with, as acoustical consultants, environmental noise, sound control, sound isolation, impact insulation, and impact insulation would be floor ceiling systems where there's impact noise and there's an issue below, mechanical noise, uh, vibration control, so HVAC units or other mechanical units, uh, vibration within walls or anything that's vibrating, Uh, room acoustics would be echoiness, the diffusion of noise, the uh, focusing, um, long delayed reflections. We deal with traffic noise, sound barrier design, vibration, uh, measurement, noise measurement, uh, which tie into a lot of the different, different areas. Product noise, so we deal with testing to meet standards for different products, but also evaluating where the sources are being generated and what steps can be taken to um, control that noise uh, and provide expert testimony. But what I'll be addressing in this podcast and blog and video series will be different projects and different principles uh, for those different topics. So let me give you a little background about myself. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, probably too long. I mean, just the, the years keep adding on. So I did my undergrad in mechanical engineering, graduated in 1990 from Lehigh University. General mechanical engineering, I think I did an acoustics just as part of a senior project, but didn't focus on acoustics. Then I did my master's work at uh, Purdue University, got my master's in 92, that's quite a ways ago. Um, My focus was acoustics, I worked on noise control, primarily active noise control of a gas pulse furnace, these Lennox gas pulse furnaces. I don't think they make those anymore, but uh, that was my project. And my studies uh, classes were all about acoustics. I was at the Ray Herrick Laboratory. Uh, They have an acoustic setup testing facility and uh, a nice facility there at Purdue. Um, Then I got my PE, my um, professional engineering license in uh, Oregon in acoustics. And I believe Oregon, there might be another state, but I think Oregon's the only state with an acoustical PE. Um, and then I moved here to Arizona and they don't have an acoustical PE, so I got a, an environmental PE. Uh, that was the closest thing they had. Uh, I'm a member of the National Council of Acoustical Consultants, and that's a nice resource, a nice listing of acoustical consultants. And actually another target audience, not a target audience, but a group that might be interested in this podcast, blog, video, channel, would be people interested in this career. It's, it's It's varied. You don't need a lot of equipment. It's pretty inexpensive to get started. Um, 
or people just you know wanting to stretch what they do into acoustics. Uh, this could be a good resource. I'm a member of the Acoustical Society of America, and that's a good organization as well, uh, and the American Institute of Architects, just as an affiliate. So I, after grad school, I started work in Madison, Wisconsin at Digisonics, an active noise control company. So sound are these, is this perturbation or change in pressure above atmospheric pressure, above and below, the fluctuations in, in atmospheric pressure. Um, and the active noise control is really taking that noise and where you see a peak, a high pressure, you throw in a, a low pressure. Where you see a low, you put in a high. So we worked on duct work, uh, auto exhaust, mechanical duct, HVAC duct work, uh, industrial stacks. And we'd put a microphone in there, some kind of sensor. You detect these waves of, of noise at different frequencies. And then you take loudspeakers and actually cancel it out. You're throwing these lows and highs out of phase and end up with silence at the other end of this. Uh, and you'd have a detection microphone at the end to see how well you're doing, uh, how well you're controlling, and the program and the, the software would adapt to that. And I was really in the installation um, department more than anything as I started out. And it was interesting. They did, they don't exist anymore, but they did do some passive active vibration isolation for aircraft. Um, and it was interesting seeing that applied. Uh, then I got into consulting and I worked in Oregon, Portland, Oregon with Daily Stanley Associates and um, Denver, Colorado with David Adams Associates. And those are two acoustical consulting firms where they handle any kind of acoustical issues. And that's what I currently do now. But they, uh, that's how I got into this. They handled architectural acoustics, the sound isolation, the room acoustics, mechanical noise, and the environmental noise, measuring, monitoring, uh, coming up with mitigation measures, reducing the noise, seeing if there's violations. Uh, and then I came to Tucson, Arizona, where I currently am, and I my first job with, was with Entranco, an engineering firm, who got bought out by Dim Jim Harris and then got bought, bought out by AECOM, which many companies are getting bought out by AECOM. I think URS and AECOM, I don't know if they merged or if AECOM bought them out, but they're a monster company. Uh, and we we're focused on environmental noise uh, and road noise in particular. I, that, that environmental department at Entranco disappeared when they got bought out. And so I started my own firm called Sound Solutions here in Tucson. Uh, I travel anywhere to deal with noise issues, but mostly I'm in the Southwest um, and deal with any acoustical issues. I don't know if there's any other background that would be of interest. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. We, we have, um, well, let me touch on a few things. We deal with uh, some example projects. So environmental projects deal with road noise, airport noise, rail, commercial developments. Uh, and in Arizona, it's a little different than in Oregon or Colorado where there's state noise regulations. Here, every community either doesn't have a regulation or they have their own regulation. And sometimes they're just nuisance laws. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about environmental noise regulations but uh, at, in a future episode. Uh, but we do deal with that in some communities when a new uh, development comes in, you do need to, to evaluate if it meets noise standards. Mining noise projects, motor sports, and on both sides of these issues. Sometimes we're working for the residents or the people of that are concerned with the noise, and sometimes it's for the noise maker, the store that wants to go in, or, or whatever the industrial or motorsport, whatever the gun range we do. Um, generator noise, residential developments, construction noise, cell towers, water treatment plants, uh, meeting HUD criteria, museum, well, what am I saying, museums, uh, power plants, 
Uh, now with architectural projects, we deal with an, a variety. I guess that's where a museum should go. Um, education facilities, we do a lot of worship spaces, uh, mostly the churches and the echoiness, we find that to be a big issue. Theaters, courts, libraries, restaurants. We do a lot of senior facilities here in uh, Arizona, dealing with their pools, uh, their uh, physical therapy spaces, the eating spaces, uh, just making environments uh, good for people with impaired hearing. We do OSHA, industrial noise, address, residential sound, isolation and impact, uh, gymnasiums, casinos, that's another one for this area, um, sports arenas, um, multifamily housings, hotels, any, there's a variety of issues or of spaces that acoustics affects. It's nice to be involved early on in projects, but a lot of times we're not involved until there's a problem. And we just get called when there's issues, and that's fine. Oh, open office spaces was in there. Okay, so that's, uh, we'll look at some of the projects we deal with and we'll be discussing. That's it. That wraps up episode one. I wanted to keep this short. Next podcast, I'm going to talk about road noise. Uh, thank you for listening to the Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast providing you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday with Sound Solutions Acoustical Consulting at ssacoustical.com. You can also find us at soundnoiseacoustics.com. I'd appreciate any input, any comments, feedback you have. If you have questions, be glad to address them uh, during one of these episodes. You can contact me by email. probably the easiest, bill at ssacoustical.com or Facebook, pretty regular. Um, and we have Sound Solutions has a web or a page, Facebook page. In Twitter, um, I'm trying to be more active there. So that's another place you can get, get a hold of me. Thanks a lot. Take care.